we've got the all new Kia Carnival van. SUV. Kia is doing everything they can not to call this a van. Let's get in and discuss. What was wrong with Sedona? I think Sedona is a good name. Sedona is a good name, but Carnival, we're all talking about it, aren't we? Well, we're talking about this one. What's under the hood, Andrea? It's got a 3.5 liter V6 engine with an eight speed automatic transmission, 290 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. It's front wheel drive only. This has the most power in this class, right? It does, and the most cargo space. So 3.5 liter, think of the new Genesis Turbo and the GV80 minus yes. the turbo. Yeah. That's kind of what we're dealing with here. I wonder if uh, the Telluride and the Palisade might get this engine. I'm begging they maybe will. Maybe a hybrid? And maybe some of the features on the inside as well. So what's to come is we're gonna get into the fuel economy, the price, We've got our hot topic, questions, coffee, and cars. For your consideration, it's all coming up. But right now, we want to get into what do you get with the Carnival? What are the key standard features? The Carnival comes standard with an 8-inch touchscreen, 4.2-inch instrument cluster, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, cloth seating, 8-passenger seating in Canada, 7-passenger in the U.S., removable second-row seating, LED positioning lights, silver painted grill, temporary spare tire, and 17 inch wheels. Drive mode here, what do we have to put it in? We've got to put it in S for subscribe and if you can hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when the videos drop and then you can watch them. Five videos a week. So every Wednesday afternoon, we drop one of these, a couple car review. And we do another couple car review on Saturday. On Monday evening, we answer your questions with our live question and answer. On Tuesday, we do a comparison video. And on Friday, we do a unique classic or collectible car in their Survivor Series. And the only way you're gonna get all of that is if you subscribe and hit the notification bell. While you're at it, if you wanna get a sneak peek about what's coming up and when the videos are gonna drop, follow Andrea, also get questions in, it's motormouth underscore Andrea, and for me, it's motormouth underscore auto, and the links are below. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code motormouth to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. So Kia, as we mentioned at the beginning, is doing everything to not call this a van. What do they call it? They're calling it an MPV, multi-purpose vehicle. Does it look like a multi-purpose vehicle to you? But wait a second, Mazda had a vehicle called yeah. the MPV, so I don't know about that. Well, it looks like a utility. They're trying everything they can to make the grill meaty, yeah. uh, really cool looking lights, uh, the chrome strip by the rear window. It does look good. There's one major omission, somebody pointed this out to me, is the door handle on the second door that slides yeah if they put that at the back it would look like a conventional vehicle like, like an SUV and they haven't done a very good job with hiding the rail which is kind of surprising if you want it to look more like an SUV yeah Chrysler does that very well uh, Toyota does it with Sienna but this that just screams minivan yeah I really like the masculine look of the exterior overall they've done a really great job as you said Zach I think this is going to be a good seller for Kia. And also because of the width and the shape, it looks huge. It does look huge. It is actually wider and has a longer wheelbase than the outgoing Sedona, but it's the same length. So although it feels really quite long, it's still the same length as the old Sedona. But bam, did they go to town on this dashboard? Well, on this top trim, you get the 12.3 inch touchscreen. You get the 12.3 inch digital driver display. It's a showstopper in here. It is absolutely gorgeous. You get this aluminum trim throughout. There is some piano black. We get our center console shifter that we both love, hey Zach? Well, looking from here towards the instrument cluster and everything, this looks almost identical to Mercedes-Benz yes. MBUX system. Yes. And uh, a little foreshadowing, I almost bet this is gonna end up in Telluride one day. Yeah, I think it would be nice to have it in Telluride because that is one thing that it's missing is this digital driver display. I think they need it. But there are some emissions when it comes to this, especially this screen, you only get that on what? You only get it on the top two trims, which is okay. I would like to see maybe an option with a package that it would be available on some of the lower trims. So what size is the regular screen? Eight inch, see? and then it's a 4.2 inch trip 
display. Okay, so you go from 8 inches to 12.3. It would be good if they stepped it if they went 8 inch, 10.2, and then 12.3 yes. on the different grades, but it's kind of all or nothing. We think the best value trim is on the EX trim. That's where you get the heated steering wheel, heated front seats, you get the power lift gate, the power sliding doors. The only thing is you get the 8 inch touch screen. So that's all $42,000. If you want the 12.3 inch touch screen and the 12.3 inch driver display, you've got to go up to the EX Plus trim, which is going to be around $45,500. So that, that best value trim you mentioned comes with pleather seats. It does. And I think that kind of elevates it a bit. You get away from the cloth seats. All right, let's get into the seats because they've done some interesting packaging with this. So this is either a seven or an eight passenger unit. Like almost all other minivans, when you get the top trim that we're driving now, you miss out on the middle seat. You do miss out on the middle seat. All trims are eight passenger except for this top trim. Now these seats slide um, side to side and front and back just like the Honda Odyssey. They're the ones that kind of pioneered that. But we were trying to figure out, here's some great images of Andrea getting into the third row. Yeah. The seats don't flip forward like every other minivan. No. You have to walk through the middle, it's weird. I think it is an odd configuration that you can only walk through. The eight passenger seating, you can remove the second row, but if you get this seven passenger on the top trim, you cannot. Now the back third row, um, they fold down like most minivans. Here's Andrea flexing her muscles, putting the <laughs> seats down. Uh, and the, the actual cargo space when the seats are up, is absolutely enormous. It's amazing. You can fit a lot of luggage in there. Or a person. Second row seats have this captain's chair feature where the ottoman comes out the bottom yeah. and you can stretch out. Um, it's not great for tall people, but it's going to be great for kids to be able to put the seat back and sleep probably for hours in this thing. Hours and hours. How many times did our youngest scream and yell every time he got into a car? I think he would have really enjoyed that. And as Zach said, he would have slept for hours. All right, time for a wake up. Coffee and questions. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. From way back in the second row, your questions from Instagram. It is a luxurious questions, coffee and cars today. Minivans have always had a bad rap like being uncool, boring, and geared towards practicality. Do you think the Carnival's overall design features can change people's minds about minivans? Probably not, but I think if you need a minivan for practicality and versatility, as you said, this one would be a great option because it has the design elements of an SUV. It's going to take the sting out of having to buy a minivan. A lot of people look at minivans as a grudge purchase. Yeah. Oh, we got to get a minivan. We need to cart a lot of people around. This one's cool. This one's cool. The minivan of all minivans is the Pacifica Pinnacle. Honda needs to revamp their Odyssey. The Sienna is hybrid only. How does the Carnival stack up? It's not a van, they say. Looks like a van to me. It's definitely a van. For sure. It but has the comfort. I think it's of the it coolest all. looking van of the bunch, though. Coolest uh, looking. And you know what? It has the most cargo space and the most power. And the interesting thing is, we do get that Pacifica hybrid in a few weeks. We do. So we'll report back and they've redesigned that for this year as well. So we're looking forward to getting it. But I think on design, there's nothing that touches this. This just looks cooler. Oh, it's just beautiful inside. There are only a few things which I mentioned before. Also things like driver's seat memory. You have to get on the top trim of this model. They want you to spend, Drea. They want you to spend. Do you think this will compete well with the Sienna Hybrid or do you feel consumers are moving more to hybrid and better fuel economy since they have the option now with minivans? Can I jump in on this of one? Of course. I don't want a four cylinder hybrid in my minivan. It does a good job on the Sienna, but it just isn't going to be my choice for going through a mountain pass with four or five kids on board on the way to a hockey tournament, for example. No, I want this size engine. I want a three and a half liter V6. Sorry, Toyota, I'm not agreeing with that decision. Well, what we found about this Sienna Hybrid is when you are going up a hill, it definitely works a lot harder. Works and, hard. And it is louder. So that is something to consider when you're buying the Sienna Hybrid. The Pacifica PHEV gets 52 kilometers of EV range. One of our followers has one. He uses actually 80% 
of his driving with this EV range, which is really good. Just want to mention one more thing about the Sienna Hybrid. It gets 6.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, and it gets 6.5 on the highway. That Amazing. is good fuel but economy. You, you, you don't get everything. You have to give something up, and what you give up is drivability. And that's it. Thank you for all of your great questions. Can't reach my coffee. It's behind. If I put it in front, it's a little too far away for me. Zach, are you ready for a nap? I'm the only guy you know that can drink a full coffee and then have a nap. And I could do it right now. Oh, before we go, don't forget to follow Andrea on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea. And because you hear the music, it's sleepy time. I mean, it's time <laughs> for nightlife. In every review, we take one question from Questions Coffee and Cars and expand on it. It's our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? With the Canadian dollar being higher, if I'm not mistaken, Canadians are getting a better deal than our American friends. Can't wait for this review to come out. So Andrea ran the numbers comparing this top trim between Canada and the U.S. using a regular conversion rate. How much cheaper is this? So this is about $6,900 cheaper than in the U.S. Now the U.S. gets a prestige trim that we don't have in Canada, but it's equal top trim to top trim. But here's the thing, you don't price cars for your neighbor's market. This yeah. is priced for Canadians buying with Canadian dollars. That's the way it's done. Yes. But it's good to know that you're buying something and you're not paying the direct conversion. There's actually really good value with this Carnival. You know, you might look at it and go, whoa, over $48,000 for the top trim. But the other minivans in this category are actually much higher with the top trim. Let's give the Sienna as an example. It's up to almost $56,000 for the top trim. And that doesn't stop there. The Pacifica is higher, the Odyssey is higher. Yeah, so for the Toyota, that's $8,000 less. Yeah. Now, when you start looking at SUVs, midsize SUVs, we'll pick one of my favorites, the Telluride. Oh, okay, it is my favorite. <laughs> um, so that starts around 46. Yeah. One up from the base is around 49. So you can get this fully loaded top trim with screens and things that the Telluride doesn't have, and it's less expensive than that one up from the base tell you right. yeah i mean it is kind of impressive at first i look at the price and i went whoa you know over forty eight thousand dollars for a minivan but when you start to break it down there is good value here and i'm a big advocate for just getting good winter tires yes all-wheel drive is nice but it's not necessary yeah. you get good winter tires on this vehicle it's going to get you where you need to go so while we're at it why don't we look at some of those mainline competitors for your consideration Four vehicles for you to consider. First up is the Honda Odyssey. It has a 3.5 liter V6 with a 10 speed automatic transmission, 280 horsepower, and a starting price of $45,500. The Chrysler Pacifica has a 3.6 liter V6 with a 9 speed automatic transmission, 287 horsepower, and a starting price of almost $46,000. The Toyota Sienna Hybrid has a 2.5 liter four cylinder paired with two electric motors and a CVT. It has 240 45 horsepower and a starting price of just under $40,000. The last one is also a hybrid. It's the Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid. It's a plug-in hybrid vehicle with a 3.6 liter V6 matched with a CVT. It is 260 net horsepower and starts at just over $55,500. So there are four vehicles for you to consider. So there's lots of competition in this category. Especially when you look at the price. The Carnival starts at $34,500 and goes up to $48,295 on the top trim. Here's the fuel economy, 12 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 8.9 on the highway. That's 19 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway. The towing capacity is 3,500 pounds. So Zach, what do you think of the drive and the way it handles? It is a big vehicle. But that works in its favor because what you have is a wide platform and a long wheelbase. It makes it very stable. Now, uh, this is very much what I would expect a minivan to drive mm -hmm. like. So you've got a powerful 
V6 engine, front wheel drive. This is how a minivan should drive. Uh, I will take this over the Sienna with its buzzy four cylinder hybrid. If I want a minivan, I want it to drive and feel like this. It handles beautifully. The turning radius is excellent. It takes corners with ease. It certainly doesn't feel like you're driving a big vehicle. It's really only when you turn around and look at the back seat that you go, whoa, this thing is big. I think Kia did a great job with this Carnival. I just wish that they sprinkled some of the features that are only available on the top trim to some of the lower trims. Now we have a man van. I like it. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.